Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today to talk about Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. I am filming this again because I didn't know that my camera wasn't recording and I was most of the way through my review when I realized that I was not happy. <laughs> So hopefully it's smoother the second time. Assassin's Quest is the third book in the Farseer trilogy by Robin Hobb. Mara kind of, I don't want to blame Mara. I don't want to, I'm not pissed at her or anything, but she kind of put me off finishing this the month that we were supposed to be reading it because she was like, it was getting slumpy and sloggy and I knew that I had to push through if I was going to finish this. And so when I learned that, even though I had started reading it, I was like, oh, like I have a lot to read this month and I don't know if I can push through a book that's going to be slumpy or sloggy. So I was like, I will maybe, uh, maybe I'm not going to prioritize trying to finish this right now. I'll finish it in another month because we do want to read the Life Ship Trader series this summer. So like I wanted to get this finished now. Despite that, so I was like, all right, let's get this done. And also a goal for the year was to finish the Farseer trilogy. Yay. Achieved a goal for the year. Good job, me. But yeah, so having learned that or heard that from her, then I was, you know, like, okay, well, I mean, let's let's do the thing. And I at no point was bored by this book. I kept expecting to be, and I wasn't. Now, do I think that this book has extraneous material? Do I think that there are things that could be cut and wouldn't really affect the, like, cohesiveness of the plot? That there are things that don't move the plot forward that are kind of redundant? Absolutely. But at no point was I bored. At no point would I say this would be better if it was cut? Can it be cut? Yes. If we were trying to condense this for an adaptation, could some of this be cut out? Yes. If we were alarmed by the page length and were simply trying to reduce the page length for like no other reason other than to reduce the page length, yes, there are things you could absolutely cut and the story would still make perfect sense. But I don't think that there would it be any benefit or value to cutting stuff like unless you're like worried that people are going to be put off by the length of this book and for that reason alone you want to cut stuff there's stuff you could cut but i don't think that this book is like suffering from being too long apparently other people do think so so perhaps it should be cut because i wouldn't be unhappy and they would be happier so i don't know but i didn't feel bored by this at all it's kind of like uh like when you get the director's cut of a movie that has all the scenes that were cut obviously they could have been they could be cut and they were cut for the theatrical release but a lot of those scenes are great and oftentimes if it's a movie you love then you enjoy the longer version because there's all these extra scenes that you also really enjoy i mean extended editions of lord of the rings are the editions of lord of the rings in my opinion obviously they cut a bunch of stuff for the theatrical release and like it didn't hurt the like integrity of the plot but i only watched the extended editions more lord of the rings is never bad <laughs> so that's kind of feel about this is like the extended cut of assassin's quest there isn't a theatrical cut there isn't only the extended cut but i'm fine with it because i enjoyed the whole thing now this is a journey book which i know that some people even in the best of times even when it's only like a small part of a book or it's a shorter book will find that just the fact of that to be exhausting or draining or sloggy like it doesn't matter if it's like an exciting quest the fact of it being a quest is gonna make it a slog for you and if that's the case i mean yes this at all times basically this book is a journey book there are different journeys it's not all one journey there are side quests and the main quest but it is nearly the entire time people on the move, on a journey, on a trip, on the road. So if that's gonna bother you, then I could see this book getting slumpy and sloggy for you. Absolutely. That doesn't really ever bother me. Like the fact of that never bothers me. There are times when I think an author has indulged in a lengthy road trip for no reason and I wasn't really enjoying my time with it because I, because of how it was written, not the fact of it being a journey. For example, in Wise Men's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss, one of my all-time favorite authors, the part where they're in a kind of a journey phase in Wise Men's Fear that is way too long. That I do think could be cut and should be cut. Here, I don't really think any of this really needs to be cut. Could be cut, but doesn't need to be. Again, without spoilers, this is a non-spoiler review. We did, I mean, I don't think it's going to be a big problem for me because like I've noticed when I've you know, watch myself back in editing videos that I can apparently talk about a book for like 40 minutes and never tell you what it's about. <laughs> I don't know if it's a good or a bad thing, but <laughs> I just do it on the regular without even trying. But so based on the titles alone, you can surmise a lot about this book. The Assassin's Apprentice, it is an assassin in training. You know that from the title. Royal Assassin, okay, well then the previous apprentice is now the assassin. And now the, the apprentice, then Royal Assassin, is now on a quest. <laughs> So like, you know the like plot arc, the, that basic framework just from the titles alone. These books follow Fitz Chivalry Farseer from like childhood into adulthood. It's a single POV story with not multiple perspectives. It is always Fitz Chivalry's story. So if you're sick of being in Fitz Chivalry's head, you're gonna be in his head a lot. Just because all these books are in his head and then in particular a journey book, I feel like somehow feels more like you're in someone's head. I think partly because like when you are 
even yourself, like hiking, like you're in your own head more than you are just generally when you go about your life. There's less, I guess, to distract you because you're just kind of like walking, walking, walking and being kind of in your own head. So you're very much in Fitz's head in Assassin's Quest as he's questing. And if you don't like him being in Fitz's head, well, I don't recommend the Farseer trilogy to you at all. If you don't like Fitz as a character, he, it's his story, so it's not going to be for you if you don't like Fitz. And you're extra, extra deep in Fitz. <laughs> Ew. Okay, I don't like how that sounded. You're very much in Fitz's head in Assassin's Quest while well, he's questing. So if you don't like him, you don't like being in one character's head for a long time, if you don't like journeys, you, I feel like you probably very likely will be miserable reading Assassin's Quest. <laughs> no, no, I like Fitz as a character. I like doing deep dives in someone's head. I don't have any problem with journey books. So like I had a great time. However, I did give it four stars, not five. And I gave Royal Assassin five stars. I do think Royal Assassin is the best of the trilogy. Assassin's Quest I, I didn't dock it a star because I thought it was too long or because it was too meandering or because it was a slog or a slump or anything like that. That wasn't my problem. I, apparently that is other people's problem. For me, it was more that some of the, the, the major plot arc that's kind of thread through all three books, because there's, there's individual arcs for each book, of course, but there is a, one large arc that encompasses all three. And the, the answers to questions that have were posed in the beginning of the trilogy the, the reveals for mysteries that were present in the beginning of the trilogy. You, like, the way that this culminates and gets wrapped up at the end of Assassin's Quest, it was a bit disappointing to me. And part of that might be just, like, if you find out who the murderer is, <laughs> might just be that, like, the answer to a mystery is never as interesting or as cool as the mystery itself. Like, find, you want the answer so bad, but when you get it, you're like, well, it's boring now. Like, finding out how a magic trick is done, you're like, well, I really wanted to know, but now that I know, well, it's not so fun anymore, is it? It's kind of boring now. So it wasn't exactly that. I mean, there that might be part of it, just that like knowing the answer to questions, like is never as interesting as the question itself. But that aside, I, I think also that it just also was kind of a disappointing answer to some of those questions. I don't think it's bad. I don't think that like it's a dumb answer to those questions. It's not like all of that and then like that's it. Like I wasn't pissed off at all. I gave it four stars, but I did feel like some of the buildup, it made me want a little more out of the end of this. So the way that things that we've been looking for for the all three books, when we finally found the things, <laughs> when we finally got the information, it was like, eh, I, I somehow expected a bit more. And eh. and then the way that it wrapped up just gently like, as a plot, not the answers to questions, but the way that the plot wrapped up just felt kind of a little bit rushed, a little bit neat, a little bit I don't know, like we like we spent all of this time questing and building to this. And in the end, it was just kind of like, and wrap it up, <laughs> which I feel is the case in the end of a lot of series when the author has like spent a lot of time building something. It's almost inevitable that the end will feel rushed because you, you're unless you spend this amount of time now <laughs> doing the like falling action, like which is unreasonable, it will feel a little bit that way. I think kind of regardless, it's really hard to not have a rushed ending, but it was exceedingly rushed, especially as compared to the length of this quest. Like when you're accustomed to a book really taking its time with stuff to have a rushed ending just feels even more abrupt. And there were some specific things that I really didn't like irritated me throughout the book. And I actually messaged Mara about this as well. I don't regard this as a spoiler at all. There are so many times throughout this book when women throw themselves at Fitz and he doesn't want it. He's not interested. And then they get pissed and hate him and get really like bitchy because he like rejected their advances. And like having that happen for sure, like whatever, like humans are humans, it happens and you know, things get messy. But it happened like a lot to the point where like every time a new female character entered the scene, I was like waiting for her to like make a move on Fitz and then for Fitz to reject it and then for her to be bitchy about it. And it happened like clockwork. I was like, can we not? Does every woman who meets Fitz have to like throw herself at him and then also be a bitch to him if he's not into it? Like, it's getting old. So that irritated me a bit. Not an, I, I wouldn't have knocked it a star for that alone, uh, but that did irritate me. Yeah, so in general, I would say it is a solid ending to a trilogy despite my slight disappointment with the ending. The like, the, like the lore reveals, the magic reveals, the stuff like that. It was, I kind of found it difficult while I was reading the first two books to believe that it kind of could live up to like this great enigma that was being built up because it was quite an enigma. <laughs> it was like all the mystery. Things I liked, I really love the character of the fool. The fool 
is one piece of it that I don't think ever really like lost its shine because the fool isn't a very enigmatic character and I think the reason that the fool remains like it wasn't kind of I don't want to say ruined for me because it's not like the end of Assassin's Quest like ruined it for me it was just like oh, it's a little it ended on a whimper <laughs> a bit for me but the fool remains kind of an enigma and I think that is a good choice and it kind of makes me wish that some other things about this would have remained an enigma I, I don't really have an idea, like I don't have in mind how it could have been executed while maintaining Enigma. I think it, I think it's possible, I haven't really thought through how that would look or how that would go, but I do think it would have benefited the book and the trilogy to leave some things a little bit, like a lot of stuff is still kind of unexplained, but in a way that feels dissatisfying not maintaining an enigma it just kind of feels like I think you just don't have an explanation for this like I just don't think you know how it works <laughs> and I think for that to work better then more of it should remain unknown we had enough of it known to where it feels like a gap rather than a mystery so it would just leave more of it mysterious and then this will work better would be I guess my tip but thing again things I like the fool absolutely love the fool everywhere he pops up in the three books is a fantastic character that is always fascinating and has some of the best lines. I was laughing out loud at some of the stuff the fool said. Hilarious and so witty. Which like when you're gonna have a character that's kind of like the jester or like oh, supposed to be like this kind of witty comic relief character, like you are, it is a big gamble <laughs> that you're gonna say that this character is funny. That is what the universe recognizes this character to be witty. And then to write stuff that your audience is gonna have to agree is witty. And I do think The Fool is very witty, so like well done. Thousand percent would die for Night Eyes. Night Eyes has my whole heart, so love that. Fitz as a character is is Fitz. He's 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 kinda dumb. You kinda wanna throttle him. But it's endearing. And you feel for the guy. He's he's been through it. See you wanna see good things for him, but you also know he Hob is not here for giving Fitz a good time. Ketrickin remains a, a fascinating, wonderful character. The world is a cool world to be in. The lore is cool. Again, some of the explanations for the lore left me a little underwhelmed, but overall it's still a really lush world that does feel very alive and very well thought out. And I am very excited to read the magic books. I will say there is something that like, it was kind of explained at the end, but I'm honestly kind of confused by it still. Like that was a thing that I really expected to get a solid answer for. And it was, I feel like the book has an answer. <laughs> But it's like such a quick aside that I'm kind of like, wait, hang hang on, go back. What? What is the explanation for this? Run that by me again? I don't want to say what that is because it's kind of spoilery for the trilogy. Not super spoilery, but like there's a thing that is going on a lot in the trilogy that I thought would get explained more and I'm still very like, hang on, what now? What was going on with that? <laughs> was it perfect? No, that's why I gave it four stars. But I think it's super solid and I think it's very hard to nail the landing of a trilogy, which is why I very often like the second book of a trilogy best. This is not aberrant for me. I frequently find the second book in a trilogy to be my favorite. This is no exception. Once again, felt the third one was solid, not as good as the second one. Didn't stick the landing. Some of its reveals, some of its wrap ups, some of its conclusions. There's a little eh. Let me know in the comments down below if this was helpful to you at all. I feel like my first go through was better before I realized that my camera wasn't recording. Stay la vie. You'll just have to take my word for it that that's the case. Um, so if you found this review dissatisfying at all, all I can tell you is I wish you could have seen the good version, but my camera wasn't recording and I'm sorry about that. But there was a gooder version. You'll just have to trust me. <laughs> anyway, let me know all the things. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined or don't. And I'll see you when I see you. <laughs> Bye.